Ah, it took a minute to clean off the bench. Give us a fresh working area so everything falling on the floor as it moves along. So this is what we got to work with. I say we're going to try to make it within this space. Should be fine. I don't see a necessity to tuck it under there. I don't think it needs really that much volume. And then they just screw together so we pretty much know that that should be how much width that we have to work with. So we should be able to mock it up off the bike but we'll check with the bike once in a while. I just want to make sure that the bar frames do not go in past these locations. I don't think so. But I'll check on that and then we'll see about making some carbon cutouts and start building from there. Yeah, that's what it does. It actually, the bars are just in a hair past that. So we're going to have to downsize it a little. So from there to there. Right there. Let's get rid of that. Just depends on what I mean. Let's make a now I know that, that guy. You actually need a little smaller so why don't we just kick it up about that much we'll do the top line trace go cut that out we'll lay it back in and see if it kind of sets down if not we'll trim it a little bit more let's see how that made out That should be pretty good. So there, how far in can I go before I start hitting the curve? I wonder if I should even shrink it a little more. I just, uh, I'm worried about when it's in there. Yeah, that piece of paper is, a piece of paper is really, yeah. <laughs> that piece of paper is able to curve. Uh, <clears throat> hey, you know, let's have some fun with it. Let's see if we can make a curve too. Let's, um, make two pieces of this. No, I'm going to shave a hair off. We're going to make two, um, two metal. Patches out of it. Let's knock off. I got a crap mark. Place it back that much. Then we'll make two pieces of metal.
clean them up on the grinder just to get them so that the profiles are exactly the same. We have two of the same. You probably hit it with a Sharpie. We'll call those to the outside. Let's see how close that's going to be to drop it in there. You go down pretty far. I was thinking about concaving them, but I think we're for a tank that's not going to show and the little extra amount of fuel you're going to get i don't think it's going to be all that necessary but what i think i should do now is we should make ourselves two little spacers the distance that we want them apart maybe we'll put tacks on those and we'll make it We'll try to build it, you know, like that right now. And then we'll work about doing the frame on the outside. Let's go. Got to go figure out how wide that is. I ended up taking two uh, burned up drill bits and just cutting the shanks off the width that I want. Then welded them to one side. And I just got them jigged up. They're kind of center. I can get a attack on each one of those and then we'll stick it back in the bike and see how it uh, does make sure there's no interference before we start building the outside That should be fine. Well, on the small side, but I'd rather have it that way than, uh, you know, because as you build on anything, it grows and grows. So this is going to get larger on the outside when I do the outside lip. So I kind of stuck that back in there. We got that ground intact. Get the frame. I could have kicked the front out a lot further. I could have gave it another half inch. I was going by the where the angle started. The bottom is correct the way it is. But if I were to sandwich the two of them together, let's see if I could show it. There's a half inch of play that I could rattle it back and forth. I, al I almost thought of uh, cutting that back for your part and just kind of pushing it out a little bit, but I uh, screw it. It's a, it's a toy, right? Carry an extra bottle of fuel with you. All right, so I figured I'd split the difference anyway and regain some of it. I cut that post in the front and spread it open. And so the bottom's much fatter. And it tapers back to normal. At least I got that part of it. You know, it could have been you know, like uh, that, but that's fine. Uh, that guy's ready to go ran around with the grinder, kind of cleaned up the edges to get ready for the welds. I am going to make the front piece and we're going to weld it all together. And the last thing we'll put in is the back, but we need to put the, the, uh, the gas line out and then the gas cap set up in it 
and you can't weld it up solid without having a vent hole. So that will be our vent hole until the rest of it's built and the last piece is. We'll put that on. And we'll do uh, one last fit up before we commit. Those pieces are tacked together, but I just want to make sure that guy <laughs> is not going to fit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make it too long. That's why you check. So now this won't drop into that guy. We're gonna shave. I'm gonna shave some of the length down a little bit. Hoping it to pop in there though, just for the marker part of it. There we go. Because even the welds are going to grow a little too, you know, you see, I keep that in mind. So let's see if that should go. Will this half still go on? Yes, yes it will. That should be good. Alright, so we're gonna, I'm gonna take a sharpie and mark the ass end off of the sharpie. Just the width of a sharpie, and then I'm gonna grind that down to give us a little bit more room that we need. I would say that that is a little warm. Wolves look good. Of course, that's what I was saying about how much fatter it made it. I'm going to go run around and let that cool off first, but then I'm going to run around with the grinder. We're going to kind of grind them smooth. I'm hoping to get through, um, get it built without having to uh, cream the inside of the tank. Got a pinhole right there. But we could probably put it under vacuum once we get the, the uh, drain, the... Uh, gas line and the uh, fill neck on it capped up we could probably just draw on the cap and see if we can hold vacuum just so that we know we got it well, I'm gonna let that cool off a couple thousand degrees and then go hit on the sander so I knocked down those welds some not really that concerned about the appearance it's more uh, getting in the way and uh, being leak proof so kind of like that it's Good fit. I don't know if the darkness is going to show in there. Now I'm thinking we're going to get the gas cap and we're just going to go with plumbing. I see if we cut like on a 45 that guy so it marries up with the tank. I don't know if we'll be able to get a welder on the top though. Probably right about there as high as we can. Let's go notch that. You want it fairly straight up and down though. Yeah, what if we notch it? What if we do it, but we put it real top towards the edge so I can get around with the weld? Got that welded in there, but now we gotta punch the hole through the inside. That's gonna be our last one. It's on a weird angle, so I don't quite know how it's gonna drill, even with a small bit. So let's go just for something larger and see how it's gonna be. It's gonna be like that.
14 gauge. We're drilling through. I don't know. That sounded good, didn't it? One more size up. And the back is still open so we can get all the debris out of it. I'm not that worried about sealing up the inside. It's a two-stroke bike, so the gas is going to be gas and oil. So I think think it's going to rust much, as long as it's got fuel in it. Uh, but it could always be done later anyway. So I'm going to do my best to clean out the inside of that before we cap the end over. And we'll cap the end over. Let's take a look at your lens. You're filthy. So hopefully, it wasn't too screwed up the previous footage. Well, that's it. All tucked in its little cubby hole. We should be fine. So now I got to take and we'll lay it back in this cover on the bench and we'll see where we got to slice into the top of that, make that fit. And I think for the bottom, I'm glad it kind of went wider because I can actually come straight out the bottom. But I think I might just take a piece of a uh, small copper pipe, drill it, and maybe solder going around it and we'll let it come down to here and incorporate a pet of some sort and it needs line to be able to be flexible because the engine has to rock back and forth to be the uh, you know the on and off kind of deal so that it can't be a, like a fixed copper line we have to have something other, other than polyflow that you know this gets too hard and brittle we got to go with like a black hose that can move with it so that's the plan. I will get the cover on there, we'll notch it, and then we'll figure out what we're going to do here. And then we'll just have to probably notch the bottom cover, bottom of that cover a little bit more. I think for isolating it, you know, how to keep it in the center. I may just go get a pack of rubber bands, and I'll put them around, say, here, and maybe right here. I'll just keep adding them on until it gets snug in its area, and then when the two halves get squeezed together, it's going to be dampened all the way around. It won't rattle, it'll have, you know protection and we can kind of adjust it if we need to so let's see how that works out it worked out pretty good I balled it yeah it's off a of hair had to uh, file just a little bit but it's got room in there to wiggle around and like I said we can kind of build it up with, uh, maybe the rubber bands to dampen it so it's all tucked in it looks fine we didn't even know it was there and like I said we can use this we'll get some kind of fancy something something to put over the top of this for a gas cap something that looks more the period instead of that all right so now we need to kind of get in here somewhere and make a need the nipple we all need a nipple or two Let's see if we can get that thing soldered together I'm ready to knock everything off the edge big solder iron's heating up but let's give it a little Help. It'll heat up. 15 20 minutes and then it takes about 15 20 minutes for it to cool off because it's meant for doing good job so we got hot, hot enough yet just getting there I have to throw a little bit more heat on that The reason why I don't take the torch right to the metal, it kind of makes a big mess of it. And we let that heat up. 
Now we're going to transfer some heat to that. That's got a tap fit into the hole that's on there, so it's not like it's going to plop over. I mean, just took all the heat right out of this. This is good for like doing radiators. Depending on where you're from. Radiators, radiators. Anticipation's killing you, ain't it? Oops. Might be the part of the video where I fast forward it. <laughs> Just saying. That would have sucked. getting there when you see that side go liquid I kind of floated around I'm starting to go Let's give a little back feed just for a little extra support. It doesn't want to get ripped out of this. It's got a little bit of shoulder on it. Or I should have tapped it in just a hair more. All right, what do you think? Stop playing with it. Last good pass around it. And I think we might have it. Let's draw on it. I think she's fine. Where's alert? There you go. That should be just fine. It's even got a pre-existing rust wear spot <laughs> where the, the ghost of it was at one point. So I can go bolt that up. Everything kind of fits back together again. Hit it with a file, kind of cleaned up the, the port there. I think we'd be good with that. Need some a coat of black paint. And uh, that can get finished up. And we got 
you know, we can cut this back, we could bend it, we do whatever we want now with this part, this part of it. It's probably a, probably 16 ounces, probably, probably a quart. Fine for this. All right, uh, I'm gonna screw that back together. And that's that. Gotta drill a hole through the center of that for a vent and then we'll, again, put something kind of schnazzy over the top of it. But I'll wait till after the bike is set up. So um, this is not dictating how I build, build the rest of the bike. It will be more of an accent to what I come up with for moving some stuff around. So that's it. I think we're gonna be done with this video for today. I don't have, I'm so lost on where we are in this. I, I got like three or four videos of this bike on the camera and I don't have a clue. <laughs> Where one ends and one starts and all, so it's a little chopped up, that's why. The next thing is we're gonna take the fender, we'll notch the fender, because now we know where the engine and the tire are gonna meet, so we'll notch the fender where that needs to clear. We'll put that back on the bike and probably get into, see what we wanna do for the seat rack and tail light and that kind of thing. You know what I mean? I think so. All right guys, again, thanks for uh, kinda coming by and hanging out and uh, playing with a little rusty junk. On the next one. See ya. All right, I lied, I'm back. <laughs> what if we solder that onto the end of that? Well, kind of a cool looking valve. We gotta take it apart, probably choke up on it, get it right about there. I, it all depends on what this is using for seals on the inside of it. It's gonna hold up the gas or not. I don't know what this thing is. Yeah, I took that apart and it's got a, uh, some type of some type of the plastics wrapped in there, rubbery kind of material. So it's gonna soak in gas overnight. We'll see how it is tomorrow. If it expanded, got poofy, then we know it was no good. And uh, if not, maybe we'll move forward with it.